Why do you think Node has taken off so quickly? Uh, a few reasons. The, I think the biggest one is because it allows people to script their operating system. Hmm. It gives them a way to do things that before was only available to C programmers, and now, and now JavaScript people can do it. But not just that, it's just, I think it's just a happy medium. You have, there's, there's been this need in the web for highly concurrent websites, where there's lots of connections and they're always active. And doing that is really hard to scale without an event loop and a certain style of programming. But that certain style of programming has only really been available to like hardcore C programmers, where there's no closures and the language doesn't support it. So basically, it's just been hard. Mm -hmm. And Node makes that easy. and then. And then, so you have this huge group of programmers that can now do cool new things they couldn't do before, and just a lot of excitement. Right. So it really sort of just opened up the door of pent up design. Yeah. Right. That's a lot of it. And then businesses are finding it's a great way to, to scale out certain parts of their infrastructure. They don't have, need ten boxes for this live chat server anymore. They, one is just fine. Right. And so it's starting to be picked up by businesses as well. So why should people use Node as opposed to Ruby or Python or PHP? So Node is based on JavaScript, which is a language a lot of people know because it's, it's the language of the web. If you want to make a website, you've got to use, Node. You got to use JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. There's, there's been attempts to have other languages, and, and compilers are kind of helping, but in the end, JavaScript is the language. Mm -hmm. But on the server, there wasn't really a JavaScript option. And so... These great languages have come out, like Python and, and Ruby, and PHP is very practical, and you get things done, but they all have the same blocking or threaded or multi-process architecture, which just doesn't scale mm -hmm. for highly concurrent things. And also, you have all of this expertise in front-end developers, and they can't work on the back end, and so your teams are siloed. And so with Node, you get the best of both worlds. It's scalable, and you can reuse your people. Code, maybe not so much, but you can definitely reuse people. The same people who are good front-end devs will often make good back-end devs once they learn the basics of networking and how that end works. I think I know the answer to this question, given what we've already been talking about, but does Node allow front-end developers to do a lot of things that they previously just couldn't do? It does. They, they still have a lot to learn hmm. because, I mean... I've done both. My background's interesting. I've done front-end dev and I've done back-end dev in Ruby and Python and PHP. But even then, Node is even lower level. Hmm. When you're, suppose you're making a TCP server in Node and then you have a client and the client's sending you data. Well, those messages from the client might be new line separated, but the way you get them is TCP chunks, just as the packets come in. Mm -hmm. And those can be cut at arbitrary boundaries. And I mean, just for example, that's a unique problem that browser side people don't have. Right. Because in that high level world, everything's given to you in discrete messages or events. And like your HTTP request is just one response. Mm -hmm. So it definitely gives them the ability to do things they couldn't do before, but at the same time, there's a lot to learn. So. So how does WebKit benefit mobile developers? Is it, is it because it creates a common platform? Absolutely. And I think that's exciting. Yeah. I used to do a lot of front-end dev, and, and the bane of all front-end devs for, I don't know, the last nine years or right. so has been IE6. Sure. Yes. Because if, if you work on any significantly sized project, right. you have to support IE6 because you have customers who are at some corporation somewhere who need that. Mm -hmm. And your business leaders don't want to lose those customers, and so they're making you do that. Right. And that's really hard, and that's really painful, and it really holds back innovation. And mobile was even more fragmented. If you, th if, if, if you thought supporting desktop browsers was painful, try supporting all the old ancient browsers. Right. I mean, it was just impossible. No one, there were no app stores. There was no decent browsers. No one made apps for the mobile. But then, for whatever reason, these smartphones came out. And for the most part, they all use WebKit. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you can write an app using modern technology that's been around for years, but no one's been able to use. And so it's, it's similar to the effect of Node, all this pent-up anxiety and wanting to do things, and now sure. they can. Right. And on top of that, we have things like app stores and communities. And, and so I can just go out and start my own company, and I can write a mobile app in JavaScript using something like PhoneGap to put it on in the app store, and I can make money. Yeah. And that's really appealing to a lot of people. 
So the last question I have for you is kind of expanding the boundaries of this a little bit, but is JavaScript now a, a, a real programming language? Yeah, that's, a, that's funny you should ask. A lot, for the longest time, JavaScript has been the, the toy language. Right. It's, you have your HTML page, and then Netscape added JavaScript for some interactivity so they could beat Microsoft in the browser wars. But for a long time, it was for rollovers or for like sparkles that followed your mouse or, you know, <laughs> yeah. silly stuff. Right. But the core app was on the server. Right. But then with the Ajax revolution and the modern single site apps where it's an app and not a website, JavaScript has been very important because real apps on the web are written in that. And now you're also writing your back end of these apps in this language and mm -hmm. people are realizing, you know, this is a pretty good language for something that was built in a week and a half. Sure, right, right. It's, it's got closures, it's got first class functions, it's got things that C doesn't have, it's got things that lots of languages don't have and it's, it's actually a pretty good language and you can get real work done. Great, well thanks so much for being with us, appreciate it. Thank you.